Kerab, I say, just like we have to be prepared for the Jewish calendar, Yomim Tovim, we also have to be a little bit prepared for the Goyesh calendar and those things that may be involved over there. So I'd like to spend uh, today, possibly tomorrow, we'll see how much we cover today basically, to try and figure out what needs to be known uh, in the next two days. Uh, Let's see what goes on. So there's a lot of halachas that are very, very negaya. Let's just start with one of them. Let's just start with one of them. Uh, one of the boys this morning was very, very nervous to know if Yeshiva is having night seder tonight. Right? That's the shayda. Very, very makbid. Is there night seder tonight or is there not night seder tonight? So I, I, I didn't realize he was so makbid. So let's discuss for a moment the idea of Nittelnacht. Let's understand what does this come from. In fact, Rabbi Sai, I, for many, many years, I used to give a shir in a Hasidic Shabbos Medrash, basically for Hasidim. And um, I was the only one in the share that didn't wear a shaman on Shabbos. The Maisa, I gave a share every single, every single week, once a week, I gave a share. And I think it was on a Tuesday night, if I remember correctly. One Tuesday night fell out little. So I'm thinking to myself, forget about it, right? You go into the Hasidic Shabbos Medrash by Shkia, forget about it, right? And the cleaner can start walking into clean already. So I'm going to give a share, so maybe I thought maybe I'll change the day. Then I thought of a different idea. Let me give a share on the Inyonim of Nittelnacht. It was a packed share because they couldn't learn, but obviously they wanted to learn. And this was the only thing they were able to. We discussed in Yonah of Nittel. So let's for a few minutes understand where it comes from. Is it a real thing? Is it an excuse? Where, what, what's the Indian? How does it apply? Who does it apply to? And which day is it as well? Of course, we have to discuss. So Lemaisa, the earliest place that I found, the earliest place that I found for Nittelnacht is in actually the time of the Rosh. At the time of the Rosh, it's brought down that Nittel was a very dark day, a day that Yoshi was born. And therefore, um, it's a dark day for Kalal Yisrael. We'll see in a minute why they did certain things. It's brought down as well in the Trumas Hadeshen. Trumas Hadeshen also brings down the Inyan of Nittel as well. The Chavisyor, in, right, in the Chavisyor brings down, we'll get to that in a second. But um, the, the word Nittel, by the way, comes from the words of Nittler, which is like hung, because he was hung. Uh, or he was removed from the world, whichever way you want to go with. That's where it comes from. It's Mufurish in the Chavis Yor, by the way, in the Makar Chaim. And the Makar Chaim from the Chavis Yor brings down that the Minig is a person should not be learning on the night of a Goyesha holiday. And uh, even though it's not mentioned anywhere else, it seems to be a Minig Ashkenaz. By the Svadim, it seems to be that it's not Negei, they didn't have such a Minig, whatever. What's the Indian of not learning? Like, what's the idea that we don't learn on Nittal? Torah is, is Nitzchis, Torah is something, Vigisim, Yom, Valoyla. But every moment of, of not learning is Bittal Torah, unless a person is doing something else. What's, what's this Indian of not learning? There's a Modi Kachsam Soifa. The Kachsam Soifa brings his Rebbe, Rav Nassan Adler. The Rav Nassan Adler said it's a type of Avelis. Just like Rahman al Islam Lalenu, when a person is in Avelis, he doesn't learn, he's not allowed to learn. So too, Rabbi Nassan Adler, some Sophie's Rebbe, and Rabbi Nassan Adler held that Nittal is a type of Avelis. Mimeda, that's why we don't learn. Now, the Maisa, some Sophie himself, disagrees with that because he says, well, we don't observe any other type of Avelis. We don't see any other Avelis going on by Nittal. So why all of a sudden the learning one that you pick? So maybe the Pshat is that it was the time that the Sutton could argue. And therefore that happens because the Goyim are gathering at midnight for their holiday and their part time that the Yidden are sleeping. It's a time that the Sultan can prosecute and say, hey, what's going on? These Yidden are just messing around. They're lying in bed. It's a Kitrug on Kalal Yisrael. So those people that are Machmeh for Nittal, uh, the Chassam Soifer says, and I know personally people that do this, the Chassam Soifer said what you need to do is you go to sleep at Shkia, you wake up at midnight and then you learn from midnight until Shachris. That's what they used to do in Hungary. That's what they did in many, many places. In fact, in Gates of Yeshiva, somebody told me years ago, that's also what they used to do as well for those people that are makbid on a little over there. In the, uh, in the Taimim and Hogim, he brings down another reason as well. It was a night that the Goyim used to lie in ambush for Kalal Yisrael and beat them. So therefore what happens is that the Gedolim said that everyone should stay in their homes, switch off the lights, and this way there's not going to be any Sakon. In fact, the Sefer Daruke Yoel brings down a Pshat also that, that in Germany, hundreds of years ago, the Goyim saw the lights on in the houses of the Yidden, and it would cause or pogroms and all sorts of things to happen over there, because during the holiday they get a bit drunk and they get a bit who knows what, and therefore because of that, we want to make sure that all the Yidden are 
quiet, their lights are off, no learning, because obviously Yid wants to learn, so you switch off the lights, and Mamela there was no learning. It wasn't a Gzeira Ba'etzim on Torah. It was just a Mamela thing that came out in the time in Germany hundreds of years ago, Posh it just so they shouldn't have any problems. It was Mamash Sakonis to Foshas in that time. Now in Eretz Yisrael, there's a big Shaila. There's a big Shaila if Bechalal it's Nagea. First of all, what day is Nittal? What day is Nittal? So most, most Hasidim generally go with the Mahalak that it is tonight the 24th of December at night. Uh, bells, for example, hold, it's the 5th of January from 12 in the afternoon till 12 in the morning. Uh, sons, Satma, told us Aaron and others hold, it's the 6th of January. And there are other different sheeters that go along the way, whatever it may be. There's no Sveik of the Yaima over here, just in case you were wondering. Uh, you should know, the Heilige Slonim Rebbe, the Heilige Rishina said that it doesn't apply in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, the Kedusha is here. Mimele, there's no problem of Nittal. So anybody that was worried that Yeshiva is offering night Seder, don't worry. We go to the Heilige Rishina, the Slonim Rebbe, we're in Eretz Yisrael, if nothing to worry about. And uh, those of you that follow the Chazanish, from Chaim Kanieski, Zatzal brought from the Chazanish, that a Vada person should learn, they bring down from the stipler, that the stipler was better than Chasidish, so he would learn, but not in front of a Sefer. Posh because of a Chil Hashem, he didn't want to cause a Chil Hashem. So he learned, a Vada he learned, but he learned, and he closed the Sefer, which wasn't hard for the stipler, could go through, you know, a few times, Yushalmi or Bavli or Tosefta or whatever it may be, Balper in his head, that's okay. But for most of us, I think that's pretty much not negated. Some of the tzaddikim would be playing chess. Some would be cutting toilet paper for Shabbos Kodesh. Each one had, you know, Kimin Hoga Kodesh, what they would do. But I'll upon him. The Heilige Vision says clearly that it doesn't apply near to Israel. So here near to Israel, we are okay. Moving on to some of the Shailas that people ask around the 25th of December time. Now these are real Shailas that are discussed by Gedoy Hadar. For example, all right, there's a Tshuva in Ramosha about the shade of going on vacation around this time of year. It's a very common time that people go on vacation because they have off, either the company gives them off or whatever it is, there's not much work going on. It's a perfect time for vacation. I know a lot of people that are to Israel right now. So what Moshe discusses the Shaila, is a person allowed to go away during the time of the 25th of December? Because you're kind of, you know, going away for the Goyish holiday, which is not really Beseda in that case. So Moshe at Be'etzem comes out to be quite machme in this case, and he wants to say, even if your Kavona is not, so I guess if you eat OUD, so I guess it goes together, right? Anyway, so I remember one time, I was, uh, I was walking, I was walking with Yisra Berkowitz Shlita one time to the car and I asked him exactly this with Moshe, are we knowing this with Moshe, Allah and Amaisa, do we pass in like it or not? And he said to me at the end of the day, the reason why people are going away is not because of the Goyesha holiday. If I care, they're going away because that's the only time the company give them or it's the only time that they can get away, otherwise they're going to got work in that case. Not only that, he said as well that even the Goyim are not doing it machma Savoy de Zora, they're just doing it as an excuse to have a party and therefore there's no problem but Edsem, we're doing that. But by the way, doing business with Goyim is a big cash to those of you that have learned Masech the Savoy de Zora, that based on Manalov, clearly talks about a few days before a Goyesha holiday, if you're even allowed how to do business with a goy? Shochanah brings it. You're a day. Some are raised kufnun and ches. If you're allowed to do business, it's a shard of issa bahanah of the money that you make around the time of a goy holiday. By the way, this is an interesting shaila. Is it, a, is it a problem for a person to say Christmas? Like, is that, is that a shaila or not? Now, what's the mice of the difference between saying a Christian or Christmas? Right, I'll tell you, myself, I generally try not to say the word, but I'm saying it specifically now because there's a she. But the, the difference is very simple. When I say someone is a Christian, I am describing who he is. That's okay, I'm allowed to describe who he is. But when I'm saying Christmas, it could be I'm describing a Goyesha holiday, and it could be looked upon as a shvach of a Goyesha Avoidah holiday, which could be problematic. The Poiskim say that if it's being done in a context that's clearly not as a shvach, and you're just describing their holiday, then that would be mota. And I think in a, in a context of a shi, even though generally I try not to say it, but in the context of a shi, when I'm trying to explain it, I think that would be mota. However, Many people ask, and this is a very common shaila, is a person allowed to wish his workers a happy holiday? 
are they allowed to do greeting cards? So greeting cards, Be'etzim, if a person has to, I mean, if he doesn't have to, he shouldn't do it. Better not to send greeting cards. But if you have to send greeting cards, you could say something like season greetings, or something like that, or happy holiday. By the way, by the Goyim, many of them don't understand why you're not saying it. When it comes to your Hanukkah, I'm very easy to say happy Hanukkah, and you all of a sudden can't wish me when it's my holiday. So it could be Mishum Eva, Mishum Kiddush Hashem, Darke Shalom, whatever that term you want to use, it could be a heter for a person to say, season's greetings or happy holiday or something like that, that could be mutu in that case. Buying presents, very common Shaila for many many people that own businesses with Goyim and they want to give presents to their workers around this time. It's a very common time to give presents to Goyim. Is a person allowed to do that? So of course we know there's a posik in the Torah that a person is not allowed to give presents to a Goy. However, we've learned it here before, maybe we'll learn it again one time, that if there's a Hana involved, then it's going to be mutter, which means if I'm going to have a person by me giving a present to the guy, for example, very Nagaya. Even if you haven't got a business, you've got a Goisha cleaner at home, and you want to give your Goisha cleaner something nice around this time of year. Stam, it's nice, you know, whatever it is, Kiddush Hashem for sure, but it also could be a Hana, because when you give a present, you're hopefully going to get something back, and of course that's your Kavana, and therefore that could be Mutta. Now, Rabbi Sai, there's a lot more Shilas that I want to get to in regards to this, which is not but uh, tied to the 25th of December, but it is tied to all sorts of superstition things and chukas hagoi and things that we do. For example, let me give you an example, maybe we'll leave with this, that we know that we're not allowed to go by certain dates and assume things can happen. Right? There's all shyness of walking under a ladder and a black cat with the gun samaisa, all of these things, relying on the moon, relying on different things. Are you allowed to do that? So generally the Rambam says, we'll talk about it maybe more tomorrow about Rikas, you're not allowed to to rely on certain dates as times that are good. But Lamaisa, we see that, that we do rely on those things. For example, we know the Shulchan Aruch, the Ramah tells us when is a good time to have a chasana. There are certain, certain types of a year to have a wedding. There's a certain time that yeshivas start, which is Rosh Chodesh. So we do generally work on calendars. How does it work when it comes to superstition? How does it work when it comes to many of the different things, the red strings that people have around their wrists? Is that real? Is that not real? A lot of different shadows are both said, but Hashem, tomorrow we'll try to get to a lot of these shadows have a wonderful day. Bye.